and I'm sure, and I'm sure somewhere in the evidence there is, but what we don't have it to understand the, the, these figures is, is, is where that, that, that's come from. Is that, is that understood, sir? I understand the point. Yeah. Same. Mr. Robin? Well, the, the tables are producing those that have approvals and the like for the five year supply. We're not, those tables don't provide the future assessment of, of uh, deliverability. They proceed on the basis of the NPPF approach to deliverability, sites with permission, uh, and the sites that are contributing in the future are set out in the table. So if you go beyond the five years, you need to look at the columns as to which each of the sites is delivering. And, and, and that's my point, sir, is that when you look at the columns, you don't know which of those sites are actually delivering those figures from. So there's, there's a lack of identification in the material that we've got to know where those figures come from. Can you help with that? Is it? Yeah, I understand the, the, the point that's being made, um, and we can provide that um, supplementary if, if that's helpful. Um, it, it's, yeah, it, it's simply a case of sites that we've anticipated um, coming forward in the later phases of the five years, rolling into beyond the five-year period. Um, as Mr. Elvin has just said, the, the purpose of the tables was to demonstrate what was being achieved in the five years. Um, but I accept that what's shown in the trajectory implies that there are consented sites, um, sorry, there are sites without allocation, that aren't part of allocations that are anticipating to come forward beyond the five years. Um, they will be part of the sites that we've presented in the paper, but we haven't clearly articulated which sites that, we, and we can do that. That's helpful. I think that would, would be useful to, to clarify. Yes. It, it, it would, sir. I mean, ultimately, we're just making sure that we've got no du duplications in, in, in effect, and I think it's right that we do that, um, on the basis that this is all relatively new material and the figures have changed. I don't think... I don't think we're asking for much, and it may be that if you were to just add an extra two columns to the material on the five-year land supply, we could identify where those permissions have come from. Yes, it would be absolutely yeah. that. that we're yeah. not suggesting there's no. duplication there from the sites that are, that are shown here. Um, it's just that we haven't shown those six, year six, year seven. Um, with hindsight, that would have been helpful. And, and then my only other point uh, is on the delivery rates for the bespoke discussions. We've certainly had conversations with the council on ST7 and ST8 and where some people might suggest that we be optimistic in our approach, for example, on ST8, is that we are currently awaiting an outline decision from the Secretary of State, and we are in preparation of reserve matters. And I'm not going into the specifics of that, but those figures that you can see on the, on the, the larger majority of the allocated sites, it's my understanding is that those delivery rates have actually come from direct conversations with house builders, not just promoters, um, I think one of my other questions might be on British Sugar, and I'll leave British Sugar to answer this one, no doubt, down the line, is that we seem to start with 150 units in, in the first year. And that is something, sir, is that, 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 that doesn't happen in effect. You, you, get a, you get a much smaller leading um, with your first outlet and then a second outlet and a third outlet. And then my final point is, um, I think any site, no matter how large, once you go beyond 200 dwellings per annum, has got to be running a very large number of outlets that compete with one another. So I would just add a word of caution to anything above 200 units per annum. I think that needs a little bit of attention in, in, in demonstrating how many developers you've got on the site. Um, but, but the majority of the larger sites that get close to 200, they largely finish within the planned period in any event. Thank you. Is there anything in that that the council needs to come back on? Or shall I carry, carry on with the discussion? Yeah. Mr. Natkus. Uh, thank you, sir. It's just two quick points. Um, one just on the, um, the York Central site, which I know it's been pushed on as well. And it, it's just to note that actually that doesn't really rely on the plan, so it's just interesting that it's moved on another year, whereas obviously some sites do because of their potential green belt status. Um, and the numbers included 107, 119, and 143 over four-year periods just seem very specific numbers 
for those period dates, but again, it's something for the later dates, but I think it's just useful to flag it now so the council can be aware of it in advance. And, and just a quick clarification on ST9, land north of Haxby, which was mentioned as the other one that hasn't had anything agreed. Just to clarify, there isn't anything problematic with that. Um, I've just found out it's because I haven't responded to an email from Mr. Lane. Um, so, um, so the council hasn't been in touch with us direct, but it appears because it's a joint, um, it's a joint promotion, it's gone to Vistry rather than Barrett. So um, I don't want anyone to think there's anything untoward with that one not being agreed, and it will be within the coming weeks. Well, you can be forgiven for missing an email on your birthday, so. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Just to um, set the record straight, we are anticipating first completions in, on ST9 in um, 2025, 2026. So it will be a year ahead of that, that um, the council's directory, but we don't have any specific uh, concerns about the delivery rates going forward from then. That's helpful, thank you. Mr Keogh, I'll come to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I was just wondering whether uh, under question 5.5, you were interested in a, a wider issue as to whether the development industry overall could deliver the rates of housing in the plan that are planned, uh, because it's all the, the case is often made by those who seek to talk down the housing requirement that it, we'll never build that number of houses in, the, in that year. Uh, I think two points, um, because I've been around a few years, <laughs> there has been a period uh, going back to 2004, 5, 6, where the council, where we have achieved rates of over a thousand units a, a year uh, in York. Uh, and indeed, in more recently, you, you'll see in some of the uh, recent years, 2016-17, uh, for example, over a thousand units achieved, although, of course, some of them were large student blocks, so there's a, maybe a slight skewing there. But I think the, the more general point is, and this has come out in conversations I've had with uh, developers and house builders, is that given the fact that we don't have an adopted local plan, there will clearly be an uncertainty amongst house builders and developers to invest in the infrastructure they need to deliver the houses until they know that there is some certainty that when they submit an application, they will get permission. So they're not going to employ teams of people, site managers, or get chains of uh, supply chains in order when, when there is uncertainty uh, surrounding uh, the plan and whether or not permissions will be forthcoming. And once there is that certainty, sir, I think you'll find that the development industry will simply respond to that opportunity. And that's a kind of general point, uh, rather than dealing specifically with the trajectory on each side, which I think we've covered anyway in our, in our um, hearing statements. Thank you, Mr. Keogh. Is, is there anything in what we've, we've just heard that the council needs to come back on? Okay. Is there anything else we need to cover on, on these two questions then? Am I, am I missing anybody? I'm wondering then, shall, shall we move on um, and deal with, uh, move on to 5E housing land supply, which is the, the next heading in the in the questions. Um, there's a lot in 5.7 to 5.8, but I'd like to deal with 5.7 first, I think, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go through the questions and find a convenient point for a, for a lunch break. But the, the five-year housing supply requirement upon adoption of the plan, um, I mean, clearly that's, that's set out in the, in the document that we got yesterday. Um, but if, if the council would like to, to introduce it, um, I'll be happy to hear from you. Yes, thank you. As, yeah, as you stated, um, the document yesterday is, is intentionally an update to what was presented in the hearing statement. Um, quite directly a, an update to what was presented in table five um, of that hearing statement. Um, and what we've sought to do with the update that was presented yesterday um, was really just to, to 
illustrate it in perhaps a more conventional format um, to ease discussion for purposes of today. Um, so table one of our update provides the calculation of the shortfall which we recognise needs to be accommodated within the five-year land supply and that shortfall is um, based on delivery rate, delivery of complete and, and completion, sorry, between 2017-18 and 21, uh, two th sorry, 21 and 22, um, which gives us a 343 shortfall. Um, we have um, continued to propose that that shortfall um, is delivered across the remainder of the plan period. Um, which is taken forward into table two, uh, where we work out the, the requirement based on that proportion of shortfall and accepting that we have under-delivered in previous years and the need for a 20% buffer also against the housing delivery test um, measurement as well. So that 20% buffer is included um, as 853 plus that proportion of shortfall, which gives us a five-year land requirement of 5,119 dwellings. And over the page in table three, we get the, the breakdown of the, the five-year land supply. Um, and we're shown to be able to demonstrate a 5.36-year supply, which equates to a shortfall of 366 years. Uh, sorry, <laughs> a surplus of 366 dwellings, not years, sorry. <laughs> um, um, so, yes, um, do you want, shall I leave it there or do you want me to move on to the rolling supply? I think we'll leave, yeah. we'll leave the rolling supply because that's the, that's the subject of the next question, but I just... I'd just like to hear what, what people have to say about this particular point. Okay, Mr. Alsby, I'll start on that side of the table. Thank you, sir. Um, so, on the question of the requirement specifically, there are four points I think uh, we need to make at the first, and these, are, these go to the components of, of of the requirement. So, first of all, I think you introduced this question by saying that the document that we had yesterday uh, calculates five-year supply, or the requirements and five-year supply from point of adoption of the plan, um, but I'm not sure that is right, actually. I think it's a calculation assuming that the five-year period starts this year. So, without wanting to overcomplicate matters, we do need to give some thoughts to whether we're calculating a five-year supply, well, you know, whether we're assessing the five-year position from 2022-23 onwards, or whether we're assuming, for example, adoption is um, beginning of the next monitoring year and we start from 23-24 and move forward five years. That's important because obviously you've got to match the trajectory to the five-year period you're looking at. So there's, there's a point for us to debate there. Um, just so we're clear, at the moment, we've identified that as an issue in our Matter 5 statement, that the calculations that we've run assume we're just looking at the five-year period from today because that's the period we can be more certain about. But I um, fully appreciate that the MPPF talks about from adoption. Second point is the shortfall and, and what is it, you know, in terms of quantum. Uh, and um, the point I would make here is that we have a different view on the short wall to the local authority, but that is because we think, as mentioned earlier, we should be stripping out the student accommodation from the historic completions for the reasons uh, we spoke about earlier. The third point is how do you deal with the shortfall? And the question here is, is it Sedgefield or is it Liverpool? The local authority is contending for Liverpool um, because I think it's suggesting that to do anything other than that would result 
in a plan that is aspirational but not realistic, and so it would be a plan that would fail the test at paragraph 154 of the MPPF. Um, I'm not sure that's right, actually. Um, the council is already envisaging a serious step change in delivery in the next few years. Um, and I mean a step change from what we've seen in, in previous years. And over the next five, we're going from last year at 654, we're going up to an average of 1130 per annum for the next five years. Um, that, I think, with, and, and come back on a point made by Mr. Keogh, with the right number of sites in the right locations, that I think the development industry could, could achieve. There's no reason to suggest they couldn't. We've got a strong market. York's a very popular place to live. We've got the need. You know, I would have thought we'd be able to, to get to those numbers and beyond. Adding a relatively modest figure to each of those years in order to deal with the, the shortfall in the next five years ought to be achievable in York as long as you've got the right number of sites in the right locations. So I don't buy into the, the notion that Liverpool is the only way to go because anything else is unrealistic. And then the final question, or the final point on, on requirement is the buffer. And I don't think there's any issue between us and the council on that. In fact, I'm not sure there's any issue between anybody on that. 20% I think is agreed. Um, but those are the components. There are some issues kind of with one or two of them. Mr. Alvey. Just in direct response to, to those then, um, we accept that um, there's a need to also consider the five-year supply from um, point of adoption. Um, we had assumed that we would be um, adopting within the 22-23 period. If that does roll on, um, we, you can see from the bottom of the table, we've tried to demonstrate a rolling supply of five years. and, and if we skip on a year, we maintain that position of a five-year supply um, in any event. Um, we've discussed at length this morning about the um, validity of including students, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave that one. Um, the, the shortfall and whether or not we accommodate it within the five years or in the long period, the, the liverpool Sedgefield approach, um, accept the point that's being made that it is a, very, a relatively modest addition that would be required to be added to the five-year requirement. But as um, was pointed out very clearly, um, and as I reflected on in earlier comments, we, we note that this is a step change that the council is anticipating seeing. Um, and it's all, it, it is already um, an ambitious target and we, we would say it would be realistic to maintain it in the way that we have set out by accommodating it across the five year uh, the, the full plan period um, that said you can it's a fairly straightforward calculation from the surplus not shortfall which I incorrectly mentioned earlier um, that we have um, in the five year land supply calculation it, it, it could be dealt with um, through the um, five years, if necessary. I didn't follow the last point. So the, the um, accommodating the shortfall of 343, um, we've, we've put that against the, the plan period um, because we see that as the most realistic approach to dealing with it. Yeah, it has all of that. I, I just didn't get the very, very last thing oh, sorry. you said. The, um, that we have run the calculation if based on what that would do to the, the, five, the requirement within the five years. If we said to you it needed to be Sedgefield. Yes, and we could maintain, a a, pardon. Yes, yes, annually, you, um, it's 40, yes. Yes, you add 40, um, you need to do it in five years. So we, we, we could accommodate that through that. The surplus that we're showing would, would absorb that requirement if that was required. It was simply because the council felt that Recognising it's already an ambitious approach, we would maintain it as such. So just so I'm, I'm clear then, are you saying that if we did 
require Sedgefield, um, that wouldn't cause you a problem in terms of your five-year housing land supply? It wouldn't now, it wouldn't this year, and if we were to adopt the approach that we just discussed by moving the five years on, nor would it do so there, because you can see from row um, uh, P that we have healthy supply from years one to six, effectively, of, of the next stage of the plan. Yeah. So it's 5.1 is the calculation. Sorry, so row P of what document? Oh, um, it's the trajectory. This one. Append appendix one. Yeah. It would be 5.13 just to give you the two decimal places so it's consistent with the actual Liverpool approach as well. 5.13. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite following that. Just so it's consistent with Table 3 and the update note, which is 5.36 with the Liverpool method, if you apply the Sedgefield method, it would be 5.13. Just oh, so you've got okay. two decimal places, so, it can, so it's consistent rather than you thinking it's 5.10. Page 4, yeah, Table 3. So if effectively we had a second column in there, which is the Sedgefield column. The conclusion would be 5.13. Thank you, that's useful. Mr Keogh, shall I, shall I come to you now? So, yes, sir. Um, as you can see uh, in my note, um, which, as I guessed yesterday, has now been kind of superseded by the Council's latest information, but I carried out an alternative five-year calculation of the five-year supply presented in the Council's hearing paper, simply to look at what would happen, particularly looking at what happens when you strip out student completions both from 2012 to 2017 and 2017 onwards. I, I don't want to go over that in too much detail. I think the, the, uh, the point is, is obvious. Um, so I think there are also some just minor, and maybe the council could clarify this, some minor, uh, whether it's my maths, uh, if that's wrong. but. I take it that in the latest version of the five-year supply, the 822 figure essentially include, is the OAN of 790 plus the backlog from 2012-13 to 2017-18. Uh, so I think the 32 figure is, is, is just uh, in slightly out because... Um, in my table, I, in my paper, my note, sorry, my note, note one, I make it that um, completions between 2012, 13, 17, 18 were three, four, three, two. I think we're agreed on that. That correlates with what's in the papers, what's in the council's hearing paper. Um, and then the requirement for the period is 3950, which I think is just a straightforward 790 by five. And therefore, the, the backlog is 518 divided by 12, which is 43 and not 32. Unless my, my maths are wrong. It, it's divided by 16 as the planned period. So when we were um, discussing this um, last week as mm -hmm. well, um, we explained the position on the carrying forward of that pre-plan period shortfall, which gave us the requirement. So everything within the plan period that we're dealing with now is from 2017, and that's assessed as being our shortfall. Our requirement happens to include previous shortfall before the plan period, and we're, not, we're dealing with that separately as a matter of the requirement, not as the supply at this point. And yes, and as I said, the, 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 that shortfall pre-plan period was divided by 16 as the, 
for the periods of years of the plan to give us the annual addition onto the 790. Not 11 or 12, sorry. Yeah, so that, that, would, ex okay, that would explain that point. Um, the second point I have is just looking again, it may take a bit more looking at the, the council's paper that was put in yesterday. But um, looking at their completions in, in their table one, housing delivery 2017 to 2022, and the completion figures they've got there. So it'd be useful to know where they have come from because for the purposes of my calculations, I've used the council's housing monitoring reports. And for the period 2012, 13 to 2017, 18, both myself and the council come to the same figure because I think we're using the same data, which is the council's housing monitoring report. For completions after 2017-18, in table one of my note, I've set out the completions data in my column B for 2017-18 to 2021, sorry, 2020-21, which I have taken from, continued to take from the Council's Housing Monitoring Report. In other words, it's a consistent set of data over a time period based on the Council's monitoring reports. The Council seem to have different completion figures for the periods 2017-18 to the periods 2021-22. Although, again, I said, my, my table one only went up to 2020, 21, because that's all we had, had the, the, the information for at that time. So I'm just wanting to know, so for, just to very quickly go over it. So 2017, 18, I make it one, two, nine, six, the council have one, three, three, one, and so on. The figures are different. I just, I'm just is interested in where they've come from. A, a, a simple answer to that in that, um, those figures are exclusive of the communal establishments and student accommodation completions, which are calculated separately and are shown in the um, top rows of the um, trajectory that is appended to our housing supply update. That, that would explain it, sir, but it's just it's a change in the approach compared to the period pre 2017 18, that was all. I, un I understand. Mm. Was there anything else, Mr. Keogh? That's all for now, sir. That's great, thank you. Shall we, shall we do a few more? Or shall we? I think I'm getting a strong suggestion that we should break for lunch. I'm, I'm good with that as well. So we're at five to one. I mean, we, we've made. Um, reasonable progress, I think, but um, should we say quarter two? Everyone content with that? We'll resume a quarter to two, but leave your nameplates up because I'll, I'll come straight to you on this side of the table. Okay? Until then, thanks everyone.